Bugsy Malone is a unique 1976 musical film featuring an all-child cast playing a comedic take on classic gangster movies. Set in the 1920s, it tells the story of a young boxer who gets caught up in gang rivalry and pie-throwing fights. This movie stands out for its catchy music, memorable characters, and the fact that it's performed entirely by kids. It's a fun and entertaining watch that has brought laughter and joy to many. While I don't have personal experiences or memories, I know that for some, Bugsy Malone has been a source of inspiration, teaching the value of creativity and the importance of following one's dreams, no matter how big or small you are. For others, it's a cherished memory from their childhood, a film that brought families together and sparked imaginations. Now we're curious to hear from you. What's your most memorable experience related to Bugsy Malone? Did it inspire you in any way, or do you have a special memory associated with it? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear about the moments this film has created for you. Keep watching as we dive into more surprising and touching facts about this classic movie. Bugsy Malone is a musical gangster movie that premiered in 1976. It is set in the 1920s and tells the story of a young boxer named Bugsy Malone who gets caught up in a gang war between two rival groups. The film is unique because it features only child actors, including Scott Baio as Bugsy and Jodie Foster as Talala, a singer at the speakeasy. The children use splurge guns that shoot whipped cream instead of bullets. The movie is known for its catchy songs, dance numbers, and its humorous take on classic gangster films. Despite its playful tone, it deals with themes of love, ambition, and rivalry. Bugsy Malone was well received for its creativity and the performances of its young cast. It has since become a classic enjoyed by both children and adults. In the world of child actors and period films, the search for the perfect ensemble cast can be a lengthy process. For one particular film, it took an entire year to find the right group of young stars. The authenticity extended to the locations as well, with the Richmond Theater standing in for the fictional Bijou Theater tryouts. Among the cast was a young Jodie Foster, who, despite being only 13, was no stranger to the camera, having already been in 10 movies and a television series by that time. In a remarkable feat of set construction, a New York street scene was created indoors to circumvent child labor laws prohibiting night work. This elaborate setup, housed within Pinewood Studios' B stage, required a solid foundation supported by over 80 tons of concrete and featured functional steam outlets for added authenticity. Jonathan Scott Taylor, who appeared in minor roles, went on to portray a notorious character in a horror sequel. Meanwhile, John Cassisi, known for his role as Fat Sam, extended his on-screen antics off-camera, engaging in playful roughhousing with fellow cast member Sheridan Earl Russell, who recounted these moments with a sense of humor. In a unique casting choice, every actor in this film was a teenager or younger, with none older than 16 years. This feature marked the beginning of Julie K. Smith's acting career. The search for the perfect cast was extensive and international, with director Alan Parker spending over a year auditioning young talent. He scoured locations across Britain and even ventured to American cities like Harlem and Los Angeles. In total, the audition saw more than 10,000 hopefuls, among them Scott Baio, who, despite his Brooklyn roots, was discovered during a casting session in Los Angeles. The creative process behind the music of this film saw Paul Williams not only composing all the songs, but also lending his voice for the lead character's singing parts originally played by Scott Baio. Alan Parker, who took on the project as his first major directorial endeavor, also tried his hand at songwriting. Despite his efforts, the producers decided to bring in Williams, a seasoned songwriter, to ensure the music matched their high expectations. This collaboration resulted in a memorable soundtrack that complemented Parker's directorial debut. In the mid-1970s, British producer David Putnam embarked on a project that would become a notable entry in the careers of two young American actors, Scott Baio and Jodie Foster. This film marked the beginning of their collaboration with Putnam, which would later include another project titled Foxes. Casting for this musical gangster film was a unique endeavor, as it featured a lineup of mostly new faces, with many of the young actors and actresses having only minor television roles or appearances to their names prior to this. Among the potential leads, Mark Curry was a contender for the central role, showcasing the open search for talent that characterized the film's casting approach. In the process of transforming into the character Talula, 
Jodie Foster experienced a significant emotional reaction upon discovering her hair, and eyebrows had been altered more drastically than anticipated. The change involved bleaching her hair and plucking her eyebrows for the first time, which was a departure from the simple rinse she was told to expect. Additionally, Katherine Apanovich made her first appearance in the film industry with this project. Behind the scenes, the production faced challenges with the props, specifically the splurge guns. Initial attempts to use wax balls filled with cream were abandoned due to the pain they caused when fired. The solution was to use ping pong balls instead, and the final effect seen on screen was achieved through editing, combining shots of the balls being fired with scenes of actors having cream thrown at them. This clever technique ensured the actor's safety while maintaining the visual humor of the splurge gun scenes. In the world of early cinema, three young talents made their first appearance on the silver screen. Fifi Marchies, Louise English, and Vivian McCone stepped into the spotlight, each bringing their unique presence to the film. Their performances marked the beginning of new careers in acting as they took their first steps in the industry with this project. These debuts signified fresh faces joining the ranks of performers ready to leave their mark on the storytelling canvas of film. In a unique casting choice, Gary Marshall was impressed by Scott Baio's acting skills, leading to his role as Cha Cha in the television series Happy Days. The film's memorable Chinese laundry sequence took place within the walls of a former public bath, adding a touch of authenticity to the setting. Additionally, the film shares its name with the lead character from the 1942 musical Yoko Boy, highlighting a connection between classic and contemporary musicals. In a unique casting choice, the film featured a young ensemble with an average age of 12, showcasing early performances from talents like Scott Baio and Jodie Foster. These two would later share the screen again in another film. The production also made creative use of an old biscuit factory in Reading, transforming it into the fictional splurge ink warehouse for the film setting. In the mid-1970s, there was an announcement for a television series adaptation that was set to be filmed in Dublin. However, it was ultimately not produced. The musical aspect of the film was unique in that adult singers provided the vocal tracks for the characters, with Bonnie Langford being the sole cast member to use her actual voice. The production also utilized a former biscuit factory in Reading, Berkshire for some of its scenes. This location was later demolished in the early 2000s to make way for the construction of a large insurance company's office. During the summer of 1975, Scott Baio, standing at a modest height of 5 feet 2 inches, took on a significant role in a unique film project. The production saw the creation of innovative splurge guns, a task that required three months of dedicated work by the special effects team at Pinewood Studios. The challenge was to design a device that could launch a capsulated custard pie without it backfiring on the user, a problem solved with the help of a gunsmith and the expertise of Malcolm King. Alan Parker, the director, had such confidence in the capabilities of his young cast that he believed Jodie Foster could have stepped in to direct had he been unable to fulfill his duties. This level of trust and the innovative spirit behind the scenes were pivotal in bringing this distinctive story to life, 